Hi, I'm Jennifer from CGJC Tools and today we're going to be making this. This is part two of a video series. Here, we're going to create the UVs for this bell. If you missed part one of the video, the link is here. In that video, we created the model. Now let's get started with the UVs. The first thing I want to do is change my workspace to UV editing. Once you have the UV editor open, you can see the UVs being displayed on the mesh. These are the default UVs that Maya created when we modeled. Red indicates that the UV is flipped. Purple indicates that there is some overlapping. Blue means that the UVs are facing the correct way. And if we zoom out, you can see that the UVs create a very distorted image right now. The best way I can explain UVs is these paper printouts of your favorite characters or animals. You would print these out and cut along the edges. You would then fold and glue the different pieces and you would end up with a 3D paper version. UVs are similar. We already have our 3D model, but UVs are those faces corresponding with it. We can't paint on overlapping UVs because it will place the drawing on two sides of the mesh. And this is why UVs are so important to creating textures. They are your template for where you're going to paint. So how do we organize these UVs? Maya provides you with a couple of options, and I'll show you the most common ones. If we click automatic, you can see that Maya creates a lot of cuts and separate pieces to keep it from stretching. But it is also quite tedious to try to paint on this and get every edge to match up when you're trying to paint in 2D. Best plane means that you select a face and it projects from that normal. It will look good from some areas, but really bad in others. Camera base is just what the name entails. We'll create UVs based on where your camera is facing. Cylindrical works well on perfect cylinders, but since our mesh tapers in and out, it doesn't do the calculation 100%. Many people have different methods or techniques that they like to use. I typically like to start with camera-based UVs. Since it's tempting to do cylindrical in this model, I'll go that route. You can see cylindrical isn't perfect because all the squares are stretched. The goal is to keep them as square as possible. So I first examine where the cuts are. There are very few here to begin with, which is what I prefer. I'm going to select edges based on the region. When it comes to UVs, you typically want to select the edges or seams that will be less noticeable in your model. In this bell, we have no choice but to have at least one edge that goes all the way across the mesh because we need it to be able to open up. You can see that I'm going through and grabbing the edges that are the tightest creases. Those edges would most likely be where dirt accumulates on this mesh. So I know when I texture, I will be placing a sort of dirt look there that will cover up my seams well. Once I've made my selections, I can go to the UV editor and click cut, sew, and go to cut. You can see that my edges turn white to indicate that they've been cut, and I continue to do this throughout the mesh. Since I clicked this once already, I'm just pressing G, which is the shortcut to perform the last action again. At this point, I'm not worried about cutting too much because I know that I can always sew them back together as needed. Now once that I have my cuts, I'm going to click unfold in the UV editor. You can immediately see that all of these shapes look like they just sprung open. Well, each of these shapes is called a UV shell. And if we take a closer look and start moving them around, you can see that what's happening is that each of these shells try to calculate what its natural curvature would be to try to maintain the UVs as square as possible. Certain areas have more squares than other squares, and that's just because some of the UV shells are a lot larger in relation to what they are in the actual 3D model. If you start clicking on the shells, you can see which shell belongs to which faces and which vertices on the actual 3D mesh. If I only want to unfold one UV shell, all I have to do is select that UV shell, right click, switch my selection type to UVs, so only select the UVs in that one shell, and then click unfold. Now I could do this to each individual UV and start analyzing what is happening in each shape, seeing how it affects all of the squares, see if there's stretching, if there's a little bit of uh, wavering between the squares. The important thing to remember is that all the squares that you're seeing is an indication of how your texture will later stretch or not stretch. UVs are a lot of trial and error and a lot of organization. I'll continue going through each UV shell, making sure they don't overlap, and just move them out of the way to begin. The process that I'm going to undergo now is select the UV shell, turn the selection to UVs, click unfold, move the shell around, scale the UVs out of the way. If I get to a point where things look too disorganized and I really want to clean this up, all I have to do is click here on Layout. Maya will try to guess where to place each one of the UV shells within the U1V1 grid. And you want to place everything within this U1V1 grid because this is just one square panel 
so you just have one JPEG image that you can later grab and paint on top of. In a more complex model like a human face or body or anatomy, you could use multiple UV grids. But in this case, we're only going to use the one UV grid because our model's not that complicated and not that large. If I'm unfolding a UV shell, and it looks kind of like this sort of rounded rectangle that you see here, I'll try to use the straighten operation, and I'll just adjust the value. See, this value is based on the angle of rotation. So it's the angle that it's going to look for and try to straighten it out. Anything within this angle is going to be straight. I'm going to try different numbers here, and this one looks like it gave me a good rectangle. And I can compare what that UV looks like before I straighten it, and if I just do an unfold. As you can see, it looks pretty good on both, but it's going to be much easier for me to paint if it's a rectangle, completely straight. Because it works so well on this section of the model, every section of the model that I unfold that gives me this sort of look, I'm going to try the same procedure. Unfold the UVs, and then try to straighten them out into a perfect rectangle. And I can also do unfold in only the U or only the V in order to get those straightened and then unfolded to make sure that it compensates for, that, for the new look that it's got to do. In some instances, the straightening isn't going to work 100%. You're going to sometimes get some weird things that look like this. Now, you have a couple different options of what you could do. In this case, I'm just going to manually move some of the UVs to try to untangle this little bit of a twist that I get at the ends. It's a little bit of some guesswork, but once it looks closer to a natural unfold, I'm just going to unfold along that U axis and then do another straighten and another unfold on the U axis. To get these working just right is a bit of work back and forth between unfolding and straightening. If you're manually moving UVs, I still suggest that you try a little bit of the unfold and straightening techniques because you're going to guarantee that you're not going to stretch when you're manually doing it. Another common thing that can happen when you're straightening your UVs is your shell may straighten on some parts of it, but then at a different angle, it'll straighten, but create kind of like maybe like a 64 or 45 degree angle bend. And the way to fix that is that you can cut it right where that edge starts bending off to another angle. Once you've got that, what I like to do is I select that UV shell with the UVs, kind of rotate it to that perfect flat line that I want. Then I'll do an unfold in U, another straight in, another unfold, and then I'll grab that edge that matches between the two and I'll sew them together. Once I get them sewn together, I'll do a straight in to make sure that it's all lined up well, and then I'll do another unfold in the U act. When you're doing UVs, there's a lot of repetitive things that you keep doing. Keep unfolding, selecting UVs, keep straightening, manually moving a little bit, straightening, unfolding. So I'll speed up a section of this video where I'm just doing those same procedures over and over and over again. Once I have things looking better, then I'll start seeing if there's any pieces that I can join together or sew together. The more pieces I can sew together, that means the less pieces I have to worry about matching edges when I try to paint textures later on. Now, not every piece that you try to sew together is going to work or look good. Some of them might cause even more stretching than when they were separate. As you keep doing this, you'll get a feel for when you should sew things together and when things will look better separate. Typically, if the curvature is opposite, like if one is curving concave and the other one's convex, chances are if you try to sew them together, they're not going to work. Now, when I start getting to these pieces like this that are completely straight rectangles, you'll see that when I sew them together, they work really nice. That's because they were about the same size, they were completely straight, and that sew operation really didn't make much of a difference in their shape. And not all pieces are going to look good when they're straightened. So there's some instances here where I tried to straighten out a piece and it just really warped and it just couldn't get it straight. And that's totally fine. You want to straighten wherever you can, but you don't want to force it if it's going to look bad. Because it's just going to stretch your, you, your textures later on. It's going to be impossible to paint. So again, UVs is a lot of trial and error. And the more you practice it, the more you'll get a fear for what works best. Once you have all the pieces working and looking the way you want, it's just a matter of laying out the pieces in a way that makes sense to you. So I'm placing all the pieces based on how they stack up in the actual model. So I know what direction I'm going to paint and when I have to blend edges together. And that concludes our video. A virtual high five and a round of applause for learning something new. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also check out our links below for some cool CG stuff.
our social media pages, and our Patreon page.